Okay, so here we go then. Welcome, guys, to the Tyrant Free-For-All. Uh, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've got eight of the very, well, top players of AO that AOC has to offer at the moment. Uh, it's a star-studded lineup here on uh, this migration Free-For-All King of the Hill game. And I am just so stoked to see how this one is going to go. So let's uh, introduce the players, see who we've got here, and uh, and just get hyped for this. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, so over to the very left of the map, in the blue, we have got Cab playing as the Vikings, and I've got to say, that's a pretty decent pick for, well, not pick, it's, uh, I believe it's random sieves. Um, pretty <laughs> decent pick. Okay, hang on. They're going to call a re because Viper's deer are bugged? Uh, okay, I don't know what the rules are on restarting here. Um, it, if Viper legitimately is calling a restart here, then I guess we're going to have to go back. But uh, Vikings for, for Cab, I think he's going to be pretty happy with that. I guess Lee on migration. Um, I don't know if Viper's going to call a re or what though. I guess we'll have to wait until the four minute mark. But I'm kind of hoping that we don't get any restarts here. So there we go. Blue cab in as the Vikings. Up to his north at the very left of the map as well. We've got Jordan23 playing in grey as the Britons. Um, Britons, well, you know, they're not a particularly well-known naval civilization. You know, they've got decent ships. They've got, uh, they've got of course, uh, all those upgrades there as well. But uh, for, for the Britons, you don't really you don't really consider Britons being, you know, a super naval civilization. But uh, it could be, could be decent. Lacking a little bit in the late game. Game, though so I think for Jordan 23 having Britons here probably not so, gonna be such a good thing at all uh, we'll have to wait and see of course and, uh, and see how he decides to play it uh, up to his north uh, to the northwest of the map we've got slam playing in the red as the Byzantines and he is uh, well I think definitely getting a good sieve here Byzantines excellent civilization for this I feel uh, you know they've They've got a very versatile civilization. They've got the ability to build, you know, almost every unit in the game. And although they don't do one thing particularly well, they do everything a little bit. So they're able to counter everything. And, you know, they're lacking a little bit of that heavy siege in the late game. But uh, that's not too much of a problem, I don't think, uh, when you've got a very good variety of land units. I just want to check that the stream is alright real quickly. Paranoid that you guys won't be able to see, so if there's a problem, someone can message me on Skype and I'll be able to hear it. Uh, up to the very north of the map, in the teal, we have got Riot playing as the Persians. Again, I think this is another great uh, civilization to have in this matchup. Uh, you've got to bear in mind this is a free-for-all. So, you know, having a civilization that has a lot of versatility, has a lot of options available to them, I think it's it's just going to be absolutely great for, for Riot and Slam here, who have got Persians and Byzantines. I, I think they probably couldn't have hoped for anything better. Um, maybe the Huns as well, but uh, we'll see what else everyone else has. Uh, over to the northeast of the map, we've got Fire in green, playing as the Mayans. Uh, gonna be a good a good interesting game for him. Obviously Mayans, one of the best economies in the game. Their resources lasting 20% extra means that he is gonna be able to juice that gold. He's gonna be able to get every little bit out of all of these resources. And that should set Fire up very nicely, actually, for maintaining a push on the center here. Of course, we've gotta remember this is King of the Hill, and it's whoever controls this wonder for the longest time. Um, we'll see that come into action in a little bit once players manage to make it onto the mainland, I guess. And we've also got the Viper then. Very, very uh, well-known player. Very popular in the poll. We've got the Viper over to the far east of the map playing in the yellow as the Celts. And, um, you know, Celts, decent naval civilization here, actually. Um, not quite as good as the Vikings, which Cab has got. But Celts, with that wood gathering bonus, able to sustain galley production quite comfortably. And now, you know, I think the thing here with players, with this being migration, they really don't want to risk getting stuck on their starting island. Imagine if they lost the water control and they couldn't get any villagers onto the middle island that's pretty much gg because you have to be here to get the monument but we can talk about that in a little bit as uh, i need to introduce the rest of the players down to the very southeast of the map we've got badgio playing in orange as the turks 
And, you know, the Turks, again here, are going to be a great late game civilization. The only downside I see for this is that the Turks do require a lot of gold. They don't have any trash. Well, they do have trash. They have hussars. But they can't upgrade past spearmen. They can't upgrade past uh, standard bog standard skirmishers. Which, for Bajiofro, if he cannot secure gold in the late game, he is going to have a tough time. So, being the Turks, you've kind of got to get quickly. It's all about the speed. It's all about the momentum. And it's whether or not he can take map control, secure himself enough gold to be able to keep that, uh, those units coming out. Obviously, Turks require a lot of gold. Uh, they have a lot of gunpowder, a lot of expensive units. And um, for Bajiofro, gold control here is going to be absolutely paramount to him. And last, but definitely, definitely not least, uh, we've got Doubt in purple here, down to the very south of the map as the Mongols. Uh, interesting, actually, Mongols here, because, you know, on migration, the Mongols don't really get opportunity to make much use of their uh, their hunt bonus. Because look at the deer. They, they The deer here is so far away. Um, you know, Doubt has to lure them all the way around if he wants them. And you don't start with a boar. So, you know, the Mongols here, probably not off to the best start that they could have uh, is having if this was obviously you know a standard map uh, which well I suppose migration is a standard map but you know if it had standard resources um, so it looks interesting. It looks like some players are up to feudal already. Uh, we've got Jordan 23 going up to feudal now. Fire going up to feudal as well. And uh, those two going for a very fast feudal time here. Looks like they might be looking to uh, get onto this main island very quickly. Now the thing, as I said earlier, it, it, this is kind of risky. The, the question is for these players, do they go full out into water control? Do they take advantage of being able to do a big fish boom? Or do they just try and quickly get onto the center island as fast as they can? You know, forget about the water and and just get onto this center island and start, you know, setting up base over here. I think really the castle time for these players is going to be so crucial uh, as well because they will want to make town centers over here. They will want to secure this map as best they can with castles, town centers and everything like that. Um, <laughs> well, we've got uh, Jordan 23 and Fire up to the feudal age now. And this is really intriguing to me because it looks like Jordan's doing a grush here. He really obviously wants to yes. take water control quickly. And if we have a look, uh, Slam now only just up to Feudal, which is uh, Jordan 23's neighbor. Uh, Cab is almost up to Feudal as well, but Jordan with a little bit of a time advantage there. And I think he's probably going to head straight over to Cab here because obviously being against a Viking player, you're going to be in for a tough time if you don't get a little bit of an advantage on the water there so interesting of Jordan here to go up so fast the same for fire as well getting their galleys out on the water already and uh, obviously here opting to do a feudal galley rush now this could be dangerous for the Viper who has a lot of fishing ships at this moment in time He's got three docks. He's been producing galleys from all of them. And uh, the Viper's saying, you know, galleys can't uh, get to the monument. Well, that's all well and good, Viper. But if your island is surrounded by galleys and you can't make a dock, how are you going to get to the monument in the center of the island? That is the question. And we've got fire here coming in with some galleys already. The Viper's only halfway up to the feudal age. And uh, galleys here from fire going to be taking out his fishing ships very, very quickly. So Jordan 23, uh, fire very fast to the feudal age there. The Viper's still in the Dark Age, the last one up actually. And everyone else now is up to feudal as well. Jordan 23 versus Cab on the water here. I don't care who you are, uh, against the Vikings on the water, you're going to have a tough time. And I think it's a good job that Jordan 23 managed to get up to the feudal age very quickly in this position. Very unfortunate there though, uh, getting <laughs> that galley caught out, a little bit pointless uh, of a loss for him. But he's got to be careful, you know, all these players are going to be sandwiched between two enemies. And uh, we've got Bad Jofro down here sinking some of uh, Doubt's fishing ships. And it's just, it's going to be crazy to keep on top of all this because everybody is everybody else's enemy. The Viper now finally up to the Feudal Age. He's the last one up, but it looks like he's playing to Fast Castle. He's going with a Market and a Blacksmith. He's got 1,200 food, 250 uh, gold. And he's the only person here who seems to be doing a... Uh, a really long dark age, which is kind of more standard for migration. However, we have got Bad Geofro going up to the castle age, and I think Bad Geofro is looking pretty decent here. Already sending over some uh, some transports to the center of this uh, of this island, 
and he's chasing down the transport ship of doubt, he's going to try and stop him from getting that transport over. And I think we're going to see a little bit of a scuffle here as doubt drops off his villagers and uh, Bad Jofra drops them off as well. If doubt doesn't drop them off, he will lose them though. And, uh, you know, Bad Jofra is chasing him down. He's got a scout and three villagers there. Uh, four villagers. Bad Jofra, just the two. And Viper's running away with his fishing ships, but running straight into Bad Jofra here as well. And uh, it's just nuts because everybody is everybody else's enemy. But the first people to land on the island here, we've got Doubt and Bad Jofro already sending their villagers across. Um, and Bad Jofro first to castle now. And that's not bad considering he's looking pretty good on the water as well. Uh, next one up to castle is going to be Doubt, I think. Uh, Riot as well, very close to castle now. Uh, Slam also clicking up. And the Viper halfway there as well. Jordan 23. Fire still in the feudal age and still galley rushing here as they are attempting to take water control and keep that fish boom, it seems, at the corner of the map. Uh, so Bad Jofro then already getting that second TC up here in the center. And, you know, he's playing as the Turks, so, you know, he really does want to make sure he's got map control here as much as he can. Uh, got plenty of gold income as well. And he really seems to be focusing on uh, trying to take water control here as well as, of course, uh, trying to take the center also. The monument captured by Baggio Fro first got to hold that for 550 years to win the game. But he is the first one there and uh, that clock is already starting to tick down now. And remember, the winner of this game will be the first person to, uh, well, the person to control the monument um, for the longest time. So, uh, these guys don't even seem to know how it works. Slam asking if he loses the monument, uh, does, the, the, does the time restart? And uh, Viper saying, let's find out. Viper now into the center as well. He has landed a lot of villagers into this middle area. And I think the focus of this game is very quickly going to shift now to the center of the map. We've, map. we've got Riot coming down with his TC here. We've got Slam landing as well, looking to get his TC down. We've got Jordan23 sending his landing across. The only person at the moment I'm not seeing on the center island is, uh, is Cab and Fire. Cab still in the feudal age. And I'm not seeing a transport from him currently. He's got to be careful because that transport could get taken down by Jordan 23 here. And, and what? <laughs> I think Cab might have landed the wrong island by mistake. Cab's landed Jordan and not the main island here. This is funny. Cab's actually accidentally landed villagers on Jordan 23's island and not... Uh, the center island. He's going to have to re remove his villages from there and get to the center. Uh, Fire then also now on the center. A little bit later than everyone else. But uh, accidentally landing the wrong island here. That is kind of funny. So there we go. Uh, the Viper now taking that monument and dropping a castle right next to it. He's got to be going for the really offensive kind of push here. Putting up that castle right next to the monument. And uh, that's kind of nuts. He's got to hold it now for 513 years. That's a timer continually going to be going down. And when it finally gets captured for the last time, that is, will, well, that will decide the winner. I think the Viper here, a little bit of a, uh, a risky strategy actually though. He is starting to castle up this center, and of course this uh, castle will um, give him a lot of control over the center of the map. But he's got to be careful for someone like Bad Geofro, who might be doing a fast cast, uh, imperial time, might be putting up um, a castle of his own, might be putting trebuchets out and bombard cannons out to take this castle down very quickly. But interesting strategy by the Viper there to stick that up so quickly. We've got a siege workshop coming up from Jordan23 on the front here, and uh, town centers from Cab and Jordan23 as well. Uh, Cab now sending more villagers over. He's finally made it to the mainland at long last. Uh, he's, he's figured out where he's got to go, uh, which is rather fortunate. Score leader currently though is Cab, and you've got to bear in mind, Cab playing as the Vikings here, he's got a lot of war galleys out, he is going to be able to take a lot of water control, keep those fishing ships on the water as well, and you know, he might look like, a, made himself look a little bit silly there landing the wrong island, but he does know what he's doing. Um, you know, putting out all these war galleys here, going to be able to make sure that he has got water control, going to be able to harass his opponents here, and keep that uh, fish boom alive as well, which is going to be great for his economy. Other players now, well it looks like Slam's got good water control up here, doing quite a bit of damage to Riot's homeland. 
and this is where it could be a little bit risky to lose the water control because the golds on the uh, on the home islands are very easily harassable. You can see this, for instance, fire here with um, with uh, a lot of war galleys out. Going to be attacking Viper's gold here. Going to be able to take down his rest of his fishing ships. And uh, everyone saying that what's this? What's going on here? Viper with the lowest score. Well, he might have the lowest score, but he's about to put up his second castle. Bad Geofro putting up a couple of watchtowers to try and defend, but Viper starting to pump out a few um, a few Woad Raiders here. It almost feels like he's playing arena with this kind of style. Um, looks like his castle will just about make it up though, even with these two watchtowers from Bad Geofro. I don't think that Bangiofro will get away with this. Um, it looks like that castle will go up either way, regardless of these watchtowers. And, uh, yeah, the Viper blaming um, his score on fire taking the water here. Totally understandable. And we've got castle coming out from Doubt on the front as well, but two castles now from the Viper in the center of the map. But quite a lot of siege from both Slam and Jordan 23. Jordan 23 getting frisky on Slam at the moment with a Mangonel uh, looking to take down that TC. Slam though, of course, not going to be putting up with that for too long. Mangonel of his own coming out and he's on the way up to the Imperial Age. He is indeed the first one up to Imperial and he's playing as the Byzantines. So it's going to be interesting to see what he comes out with. Looks like he may be going for hand cannons here as he is adding in those archery ranges and I'm not seeing any other upgrades. So we may see chemistry coming out from him as soon as he reaches the Imperial Age here. A very fast Imperial time for Slam, considering that, you know, he is uh, playing as the Byzantines here. Chemistry coming out for him. Looks like he's going to go for gunpowder. We're going to see bombard cannons coming out. We're going to see hand cannons as well. And uh, Viper's got to be careful in this position because, you know, if he does get taken down from these ca lose these castles, then he's going to lose that grasp on the center of the map. It's kind of funny. Because you guys in the polls were saying, you know, Viper, Jordan 23, they're going to win it. And in actual fact, they are they are bottom of the score at the moment. But we cannot forget the fact that Viper still has that monument. It looks like he's going to put another castle down now as well. And that is going to go down. Oh no, he's, no, he's stonewalling around the monument. Well, fair enough. Um, this yes. is going to be tough, though, because he can't stonewall around here. So Siege Onagers would cut that, though. I'm not sure we've got any other Siege Onager sieves available at the moment. Um, and uh, and fire comes in to take the monument. <laughs> oh, it's like a constant fight as well between Jordan 23 and Viper to see who has the best score. And this is kind of ridiculous now, because Fire is able to take this monument regardless of this castle. He can stand his units in there. Viper's going to take it back as Fire retreats, but uh, Fire's plumed archers in this position are going to be cheaper than the Woad Raiders of the Viper. And uh, Fire now, as long as he's not too, um, too troubled back at home, he will be able to keep those plumed archers coming out. It looks like he's got uh, reasonable water control as well. Or oh, they're saying that, no, it looks like he's lost a lot of galleys here. Uh, has got to be cautious of this. Slam with a huge navy now. Galleon upgrade done for him. And uh, that's going to help him out massively. I'm just very interested to see what Slam's going to do. He's the only one Imperial Fire as well going up to the Imperial Age now. But Slam here, getting out those bombard cannons, as I say, getting out those hand cannons as well. Looking to deal some damage over this side. Uh, Cav as well, fighting against um, Jordan23 here with some knights and uh, maybe even against Bajirfra as well. They're all in cl such close proximity. But there's a third castle now from the Viper on the, this center area. And I think he's kind of given up with the walling idea. Uh, although they're saying that the walls are still there, waiting for them to be completed. But it's definitely an interesting strategy from him. Uh, whether or not it's going to pay off, we'll have to wait and see. But he's got the monument for now. But bear in mind, that timer is constantly ticking down. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to be a matter of time now until uh, everyone gets up to the Imperial Age and is, is ready to start pushing this. Baz Geofro going up to the, uh, well, not going up to the Imperial Age, putting up a castle here. Looks like he may end up denying this castle from the Viper at this rate. Uh, got to be careful of these Woad Raiders, but he has got his town center next to this to defend. Uh, Mangano from the Viper getting in, though. Going to try and delay this castle or stop this castle as much as possible. But Baz Geofro is going for it. Got to take out the, Vi uh, the Viper's Mangano as well. 
nearly got a shot on the castle of the Viper, and I think these castles are going to go up very close uh, together, but Bad Jofra will get his up first, and this fight for the center is going to be very huge. Viper's castle, 98%, but it goes down, and uh, the villagers cannot complete it. Viper's like, well, that sucks. Well, yes, it does. Uh, you just lost your villagers. And now we've got Jordan23 coming in. He's taken the monument, and he's going to walk in here and see these castles and be like, what? <laughs> he needs to react quickly, and I think Jordan may put a castle of his own up over this side and secure a little bit more stone, but he's got to be careful because if he does put up a castle here or here or anywhere around this side, we've got fire here with castles as well. We've got uh, Rhea just up to the north of him. And uh, Jordan23 is not in a very good position at all now to really push in here. He looks like he's been completely eradicated from this left-hand side. Sandwiched between Cab and Slam. Slam, of course, who is Imperial. Jordan, no grasp on this center island at all, aside from this one town center. And he's running to the center of the map, but being chased down by fire. And if he loses these villagers, there is no way he is going to be able to retake that monument. There is no way he's going to be able to do it. He's running away. But this is all that Jordan has left here now. Aside from this one TC. And that's huge. Because if he loses uh, control of this center area... He will lose control um, of of everything, not be able to take that uh, that center area at all. So that's pretty huge. Well, however, we have got fire now, quite a few trebuchets out. The first castle from the Viper is about to go down, but Viper is massing up those petards, massing up those rams. It looks like he's going to go for a very big, uh, a very big... Um, land push here. So many petards coming out. Looks like he's going to just try and bomb that castle down as quickly as he can. But I don't think the Viper is anywhere near to the Imperial Age. And there's no way he's going to hold this whilst he's still castle. Um, Riot now about to reach the Imperial Age. Slam, of course, already Imperial. Cab going Imperial as well. Fire is Imperial. Uh, however, Bagiofro is not going Imperial yet, though he almost has the food for it. But look at that mass of plumed archers from Fire in the center of the map. And this is what I like to see. Players are legitimately fighting for the center here, as that is probably the best way to do it. But the Petard rush coming out from the Viper now as he loses that castle. So many Petards coming in. Battering Rams as well. Can he take the castle from Bagiofro down with these Petards? I think the answer is probably going to be yes, as they all explode by the side of it. All those villagers coming out. The castle drops, and the Viper's Petards just walking in there, doing so much damage. Excellent play by him. Now he's going to go for the town center as well. I don't know if he's going to make it for the TC, but pretty, pretty good stuff from him. That Petard rush was excellent, but I'm still a little bit concerned for him. He's not going to be uh, Imperial for a long while now. He's got very little food income. He's losing quite a lot here as well, and we've got more castles from fire coming out as uh, the Mayan supremacy, the Mayan dominancy here, uh, starts to come into play. Waiting for Bad Geofro to really pull something out of the bag at the moment, and Riot now as well. Uh, up to the Imperial Age, not seeing a whole lot from him, but we've got a hell of a lot of fighting here between Slam and Cab. It seems like Slam really wants to take a lot of control of the map here, trying to take these gold spots, uh, trying to just make sure he's got a lot of uh, control on this center island. I'm a little bit concerned for Jordan23 though, he's asking for peace with Riot, as he's, uh, I think he's trying to run his villagers into his base or something. Um, oh, there he is. There, there he is. There's Jordan23. <laughs> Jordan23 asked for peace from Riot, but Riot just said, nope, I can't let you be there. And, uh, oh man, Jordan23 now, no town center on this home island. We've got Slam coming in as well uh, between, uh, over yes. here. And those villagers are just going to get cleaned up. Jordan23, it's safe to say, is probably going to be out here because these... <laughs> These, uh, these, uh, villagers are getting taken down slowly but surely. Bear with me a sec, I just need to tab out. Uh, seems like everything is okay, um, with the stream. I always get paranoid that something is broken. But look at this, Cab and Slam having such a big fight on this left-hand side. Cab's getting pushed right back, though. And I'm a bit concerned for him because Slam's looking very strong, very dominant in this center area. And uh, all poor Jordan23 has left is these uh, six, seven, eight, nine, nine or ten villagers here, which is just, you know, nothing at this stage. Uh, wow, uh, fire's looking absolutely incredible, though, in this center area here. <laughs> wow, the Viper's going to finish him off. 
Jordan 23, no villagers left at all on this center island. He's still got his home island now, but he's got nothing left at all. And I think that's GG from, from Jordan 23. But the Viper as well, gonna be struggling here. He has no grasp on the center island either. He's got this one castle and the one siege workshop. And uh, that is it. Uh, Jordan 23, the Viper, most likely then out of this. Not in contention for the center at all. And it's gonna become between... Uh, at the moment, Fire, who's playing as the Mayans, Bad Geofro as the Turks, who seems to be losing a lot, um, Cap as the Vikings, Slam as the Byzantines, and Riot as the Persians. Um, this is pretty huge, actually, because these civilizations, as I said at the very start, Turks, Byzantines, Persians, Mayans, going to be excellent for this. Uh, we've also got Doubt in here as well, but he's been dealt with pretty quickly, actually, by um, by Fire here. Fire's pushed him right back, and look, right now, this is looking excellent for Fire in the center here. The question is, can Slam actually push in here? Because Slam at the moment seems pretty intent on taking down Cab and securing this left side of the map. Gotta bear in mind, Cab has water control here. But uh, yeah, a lot of heavy siege coming out from Slam now. Onagers, uh, we're seeing Trebs, we're seeing uh, hand cannons and bombard yes. cannons from him. Not a lot from uh, from Slam at the moment, though. He seems to be pretty peaceful. Um, wait, not Slam, Riot, I meant. Not a lot from Riot at the moment. He seems pretty peaceful, but he's making elite war elephants from this castle. He's got castle coming up at the back as well. Only one at the moment, uh, but another one coming up, and a third castle probably on the way very soon. But yeah, Riot at the moment, making those elite war elephants. Going to be interesting to see if he can take the middle with that. Of course, Plumed Archers, not going to be great against war elephants in this situation uh, but this is gonna be gonna be very very intense towards the the late era stages of the game I think that caps gonna be pretty much out of it they can't field a very good land army at all um, Turks well bad for him might be able to bring something out here but I don't think he's got a lot he's losing these castles down here to down he's lost his castle on the front and he doesn't seem to have much army at all but it's going to really become between the Byzantines, the Persians, and the Mayans, I'm feeling. Uh, we've got a lot of castles from Fire coming up around this monument now. And if I remember correctly, Fire was one of the least voted people in the poll before this match. So uh, if he does take it, shame on you guys uh, for not backing him. Uh, I said I was going to support him, actually, because he was the underdog there. But uh, I think towards the end, it was Riot. He was lacking the points. We'll see what happens. Uh, Riot's got so much gold at the moment, 4k in the bank, uh, quite a bit of food as well, it seems like his economy's looking good, he's got a lot of water control too, which is going to help him out against fire in this position, can of course come in here, take out that gold from fire, and uh, get around his starting islands, well do a lot of damage there, so I think for, for, for Riot, having that water control is huge, he's also got more war elephants coming out here on the left side, uh, on the right side even, just war elephants coming out all over the place, and it looks like he might be able to actually sustain war elephant production as well that's the thing you know he's got a lot of water control here but my god he has got a lot of elephants as well look at that 20 plus 4 attack 3 plus 4 pierce armor 600 hp and uh, these war elephants once massed up might just might just stomp over the center of the map and that could just be terrible. I mean, Fire is probably pretty confident at the moment, sitting on the center here, thinking, yeah, you know, I've got the monument in my control. I've got a mass of plumed archers here. But what is a mass of plumed archers against a mass of elite war elephants? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, Slam then. Continuing to take down Cab. Looks like Cab's going to be completely pushed off the island as well very shortly. Bad Geofro is, uh, is being finished up as well. Cab now running through Bad Geofro's town center. Trying to take it down with his villagers here. And his skirmishers as well. Uh, which is uh, kind of funny. Um, <laughs> he's getting in there. He might batter this TC down with villagers alone. It's still falling, which is just brilliant. But uh, yeah, it looks like Cab and, uh, and Bad Jeffro are being pushed away now by Slam. And I'm just wondering, this uh, this final battle here in the center is going to be something else. Uh, you know, it's going to just be huge. Uh, so many war elephants at the moment. For, for for Riot, he's almost population capped. Um, we've got Jordan 23 
on 65 population going up to the Imperial Age. Slam on 176, Cab on 91, Fire on 176, Viper on 54, Baggio on 131, Doubt on 55, and of course Riot on 192. Riot looks like he's in a great position now. Uh, Doubt still got quite a few Mangadai on the field, but he's losing grasp of the center island. He's been pushed right back by Fire. Fire is doing his best to eradicate him. And it seems like both Slam, um, Slam, Riot, and Fire all seem to have the similar strategy here. It's eradicate the other players from the center and reduce the amount of people who, at the end game, can be fighting for this. Uh, Fire has a huge military. He really does. Uh, he's got 91 plumed archers at the moment. Fire's plumed archer numbers is just huge. He's putting up more castles around the center here. And the other players are going to have to be quick. There's 200 years left, which is less than half of the initial time. And they're going to have to clean up, clean up Fire here. Here, uh, in this center island pretty pretty quick time really uh, the only thing I can think at the moment is that Riot has a much bigger Navy and he's got a lot of water control over over fire so he may be able to uh, take advantage of that and do a lot of damage you can see he's already pushed fire off of this gold uh, but for the Mayans they're such a cheap civilization they their resources as I say last 20% longer as well so this gold will last longer and he doesn't need so much gold to keep that plumed archer production going I'm very surprised, to be honest with you, to see that Slam and uh, Aria here haven't had a dispute at all. Uh, Slam has just been pushing this way the entire time, taking out uh, Cab and Bajiofro, and uh, and pretty much just leaving Aria to boom up. Uh, he's yes. just been booming this entire game, it seems, and losing very little, in yes. fact. But it could be that Slam is about to turn on him now. Slam just upgrading to Bombard Tower, so he's going to be pumping out those Bombards in the center of the map to try and get that extra map control but Riot now retaking that score lead and so many war elephants for him really um, I, I, I want to know how many he's got actually let's just find out really quickly he's got 53 war elephants I'm just I am so excited to see these war elephants just just absolutely stomp the center of the map it's gonna be a glorious sight uh, but it's gonna be you know a three-way fight here the plumed archers of fire the hand cannons the rams and the onagers from slam and of course the war elephants from Riot. it's gonna be fantastic uh, these onagers could be pretty damaging to fire though Obviously, 50 plus 1 attack, um, you know, going to do a lot of damage to these Plumed Archers. The Plumed Archers, though, with 65 uh, HP, able to do a little bit of tankiness there. But, you know, it's not going to be huge, especially once the Rams get in as well. I think the Siege from Slam here is definitely, definitely a good idea. And I'm surprised to see that Cab is still on the center island here as well. I don't know where he's going or where, where he's running to. Um... But Slam, trying to take this map control with these uh, Bombards here. Uh, we've got Rhea still making those War Elephants. It's absolutely fantastic. And uh, John23 and Viper just having a little bit of a fight. <laughs> Oh, this is fantastic. I don't know why why they're doing this. Vipers landed Jordan 23. They're having their own battle at the moment. They don't care about the monument. Um, and Vipers spamming mana arms into Jordan 23's base. He's upgrading capped ram. Jordan 23's got a castle and he's making some longbows. And the Vipers just here uh, with, with all of his transports fishing Jordan's waters. You know these guys have got a bromance. And uh, the Viper just spamming those mana arms. I wonder if he's even upgrading. No, he's not. He's not even upgrading them to long swordsman he could afford to but he's just making mana arms over here that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be funny to watch uh, i love how these guys have their little bromances it's quite cute uh, but yeah, but Fire definitely looking very menacing in the center. And it uh, looks like Slam about getting ready to push in as well. We'll look at that in a moment. Uh, I'm interested in this development on the left, though, with the Viper's Mana Arms. He's not bothering up upgrading to Long Swordsman at all, uh, which is kind of funny. He's making some Cap Rams here as well. He's got very little wood, actually, but oh man, this is funny. This is funny. He's taking. He's going to take uh, Jordan 23's wood. Jordan 23 really with very little left at the moment. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, Jordan 23 landed a castle on his base. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. He landed and put a castle in the Viper's eco. And uh, Viper now, of course, going to try and take that down with his villagers. It looks like that castle... Um, 
may have uh, murder holes though, because those villagers were dying. That was a treb out for Jordan as well. Uh, but sense is about to get very interesting now. Uh, there's going to be a huge fight here. I can't wait to see Riot's uh, war elephants. There's so many of no. them. Uh, siege or well, not siege onagers, just onagers as well. And I think we're about to see it very shortly. Uh, meanwhile, the Viper here still trying to push out. He's just done the Long Swordsman upgrade. It looks like he's going to just try and bum rush Jordan here. He's trying to take this castle down as well. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. These guys are just having a good time. Even though they've got no chance of winning this center. Funny as well because um, Doubt has lost his home island. Uh, Doubt, you know, he's kind of in the center here. But Bachiofa is like, oh man, you know, I'm not doing very well in the middle. Let's just kill Doubt. And he's, he's overtaken Doubt's island completely. Putting up that town center there as well. Um, I honestly, I was thought the action would be so focused in the middle that I didn't even bother to check the outsides. Uh, these guys having their own little fights anyway. Uh, but obviously the real fight here is in the center for the monument. Uh, a lot of bombard towers actually from Bajiofro here looking interesting. He is going to try and retake the middle. But the monument only 100 years left. The fight has to get ready to start. And Rhea is looking absolutely menacing here. He's got siege rams. He's got bombard cannons. He's got heavy scorpions. He's got hundreds of elephants. And he's going to push in very, very shortly. Um... Indeed, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be absolutely fantastic to see this uh, Viper though. Look at this the Viper just running in to Jordan's base with these long swordsmen um, Killing off these villagers. Jordan's trying to run away into his transport ships, uh, which is just hilarious um, But man these guys have to act quickly now because otherwise fire will control this monument and that is, that is huge. Um, Rhea, Rhea looks like he's getting ready to go. A lot of bombard cannons here. Try to take down these castles. And the Viper just overrunning Jordan 23's base with these long swordsmen. It's absolutely awesome to see. Uh, this this t uh, castle as well going down slowly but surely. And uh, I just find it brilliant as well that Bad Jofra has just completely overtaken um, Doubt's base. It, it's, it's awesome. Uh, so center of the map then. Let's let's shift our attention here now and keep it here for the last 77 years of this game. Um, this this war elephant push from Briot, I've got a feeling it's going to be spectacular. Uh, there's not a whole lot to counter it. There's only a few halberdier from Slam. Um, there's so many plumed archers from Fire, but it's really not a lot against what uh, what Ria has here. Sure, Fire may have the uh, the map control now, but these guys are both doing everything they can to take down these castles. Those plumed archers coming in, getting flattened by the the siege of of, uh, of Riot here. So many scorpions. It looks like he's yes. deleted loads of his villagers as well for this. He's hardly got any economy now. Sla uh, Riot is in fact. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, he's got hardly any economy. His economy is just almost non-existent. He's got 45 villagers and 111 uh, mi uh, military. There we go. Look at that. The elephants released from their cages of the castles. And they are going to go. That is it. They are going. Uh, 58 years remain. And who is going to win the $300? Uh, it's whoever controls this monument at the very end of this countdown. And Slam, uh, Riot, is about to make that push. Slam on the left side, getting ready to go as well. Bombard Tower's going, and there we go now. They are going for it. Uh, Doubt here as well, coming in from behind at fire. He might make a run for it with those Mangadai. And I tell you what, I've never been so excited in so long. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Riot just coming in with all of these war elephants. How are they going to stop him from taking the middle? This is just insane. Left side, we've got Slam trying to push in now. So many Bombard Towers going up. He's got a lot of Rams in here as well. A hell of a lot of hand cannon here. And there's so many plumed archers from fire, but not as many elephants. There's so much behind this. Rhea is just looking to take the center and stop anything from happening. Uh, to to stop him from, from not having it. At the same time, Doubt's here with his Mangadai. <laughs> this is just nuts. 
Fire saying, what the hell? We've lost, guys. Rhea just absolutely stomping in with these war elephants. Slams coming in from the left. A million bombard towers going up. There's Halberdier coming in as well. And these elephants are accompanied by a whole lot of siege. There's so many bombard cannons behind this. So many heavy scorpions. And somehow, Fire still controls that monument with 33 years left to go. They have to take it down. But Doubt's here with the Mangadai as well now. They're all getting into the center. But somehow, Fire still has it as long as these plumed archers are, uh, survive. But he's been chased away. And Riot's going to take the center now as he moves the entirety of this siege into here. The heavy scorpions and the rams just sitting behind us. The onagers. So many war elephants. And he's just... He, I think he might just have it. There's 96 years left. And he has to... Has to hold it now. The time, by the way, resets. When, uh, it gets below 100 years. So if someone retakes it, it goes back to 100 years. So Riot here has to hold this now. He's got so many elephants here. He's trying to take down the towers of, uh, of Riot, but of course, uh, sorry, of Slam, but he can tank that. He's got 600 health. These elephants can take five uh, Bombard Tower shots before they go down. And there's so many heavy scorpions here. They are just going to be wrecking every bit of infantry that comes his way. Riot retaking the center at the moment and looking like he's gonna keep it as well there's just so much here he's still got so much food he can still make the occasional elephant as well but the bombard towers from slam might be a little bit of a problem uh, even Bajiofro getting involved now with some hazards but he's like nope i'm getting the hell out of there and riot now is just gonna sit on this monument for another 78 years and sit here just sit here and hope that he can hold it against these Bombard Towers. He's hugging this right-hand corner. He's even brought his villagers along for the ride. Absolutely everything has been brought in here from uh, from uh, Slam. And I tell you what, <laughs> from Riot even, it's absolutely nuts. Slam, though, still got a decent army on the left side. He's still got quite a lot of units available. And, there's, and you've got to bear in mind, Riot has sacrificed everything for this. He's got no economy left at all. Everything has gone into this push. And if these guys can somehow get rid of this from the center, then Riot will end up taking it. Slam is the only contender, it seems. And Fire now, he had so much control. He had so much control, but it's gone in an instant. It's absolutely eradicated. Riot, just, I think he might take it. He might take it, but Slam's gonna go for the push. He's got a lot of Halberdier here, but he's gotta be careful of the, uh, of the, the Scorpions. They will do a lot of damage to those Halbs. It's gonna be very tough. There's 84 military from Slam. Only 61 from Riot, but Riot has so much. It's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Meanwhile, though, the Vipers completely destroyed Jordan 23's base with his long swordsman. Uh, Jordan 23 now with nine population. Just nine. I don't even know where they're hiding. I don't want to know where they're hiding. It really looks like Slam's trying to push in, though. And I'm a little bit concerned here because I don't know if Riot will hold it. He's got 50 years left. Half of the time remaining. And, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Jordan 23's fishing ships. Um, they're, they're contributing to his whole nine population. Uh, but the most populous person at the moment is actually Slam. He is technically in the best position. But he's being, he's, well, Ritz being pretty hard pushed here. He's got Doubt coming in from behind with these Mangadai. At the same time, we've got Slam pushing in. And, uh, and Riot has to hold these units on here, otherwise the monument will reset. The time is getting so low, but it looks like they're going to make the push. Uh, coordinated, it seems, with Doubt here. A whole lot of Mangadai. And oh man, oh man, is Riot going to hold it? There's a lot of Halbs. There's a lot of Halbs. And that's going to make it very difficult for him. It looks like he might end up losing it, you know. There's so many elephants here. Can he just hold on 33 years? If there's an elephant standing in the center in 33 in-game years, then he will take the victory. But if elephants, his elephants are falling too quick. They're, they're actually being taken down. There's a lot of halberdier in there. The halves as well, though, being taken down. And there's 28 years. Bajiofro still bombard towering up the center. Uh, Slam trying to bombard it down as well. 
and the Mangadai. The Mangadai from Doubt sinking the damage. But the problem is, Riot cannot move off the center. Otherwise, these Mangadai, uh, or otherwise even uh, Slam will take it. If Riot moves off of this little patch of land, he will uh, lose the control and it will reset and it will go to Slam. He's just got to hold it. And if these, if these elephants do go down, then that's it. Then that is it. He's got about 10 left, if that. And dropping quite rapidly. So far, so far, just holding on. 16 years left. And Doubt could probably finish him up here. Because Doubt just has to stand here and there's nothing that Riot can do. I think Riot's going to get overwhelmed. 13 years, 12 years, it's counting down as the last elephants go down. Four elephants left, five elephants left even. Now four, and, and Slam's gonna lose the center, Riot's gonna lose the center with nine years to go. It's down, eight years to go, the last elephant, and it goes. And it goes to Slam now, who's got it for a hundred years. Riot gonna resign. And now the battle starts all over again. And Bagiofro wants some, Doubt wants some, Slam getting in there as well. And it's going to be very back and forth between these three players. Uh, Jordan23, I think possibly defeated at this stage. Oh no, he resigned. Um, uh, Riot resigns as well. The Persian War Elephants, so, so close. With eight years remaining on the clock, that last elephant went down. And now it's between Baggiofro, Slam, and Doubt for this center area. And this is amazing because Doubt has no economy. Doubt has absolutely nothing. Doubt has lost his home island to Riot here. But he has got these massive Mangadai. And that is yes. all that he wants. He just needs these Mangadai now. To get back in here. Uh, Baggiofro though, retaking the center. Very well done by him. I think the real fight here... Is going to be between Slam and Bajofro, and Slam and Bajofro here. It seems like he's going to be in for a tough time. Uh, he's only got Hazars, and bear in mind that um, you know he's up against Slam, who's massing up the Halberdier. Uh, the Hazars are not going to be able to push in there, but doubt. Doubt could be the dark horse of this game, quite literally, the dark horse with these Mangadai. He could run in there with those Mangadai, snipe everything standing on the point. And then just retake it again. But I don't think he's going to be able to hold it. Because he has no economy to remake um, the Mangadai that he loses. That's it. That's all he's got. So, you know, Doubt could influence this game quite heavily. But whether or not he can take it or not, I don't I don't think he can. Slam, though, looks to be in a great position. He's got every advantage at the moment. He's got the uh, the Halberdier, which counters what Bajofro has. But both players spamming those Bombard Cannons across the center now. And of course, whoever uh, stands in the center of this map will get taken down by those Bombards. Thankfully, it seems like uh, the Bombard Cannons are, are struggling to reach across the other side. But Bajofro, you've got to remember, playing as the Turks, 8 plus 5 range on those Bombard Towers. 8 plus 3 for Slam. So his own Bombard Towers are outranged by Bajofros. And I don't know, with the Bombard Towers here, Bajofro may actually be able to take this game. The range on these things is absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, these Bombard Towers are going to be able to take out the Bombard Towers of, uh, of Slam as well. Bajofro is coming forwards now with some Siege Rams, looking to take this back. Slam's got 56 years on the clock to hold this. And he has got a decent economy. But you've got a bear. Look at this! Look at this! The Viper now coming into the back of Slam's eco with these two-handed swordsmen that he defeated Jordan with. And uh, we've got Cab back here as well. Cab and the Viper making it as hard for Slam as possible. And uh, there's only 50 years left on the clock. Slam's economy though completely wiped out back here. The Viper getting in with those swordsmen destroying everything Slam's got. And Slam needs his economy to keep this up. Bajofro is the only one who actually looks unharmed back at home. He's still got an economy of sorts. Uh, or they say that I cut to cut to a million idle villagers, uh, but he's still somehow got a little bit of eco here. And and actually, I think Bajofro may end up doing this. Whether or not he can push in though, that's the question. He's got a whole lot of hussars. He's gonna make the push in the last uh, in the last few seconds here. But I can't believe that the Viper is coming behind. He's still in the game with all of these long swordsmen, absolutely demolishing Slam's base. 
and Cab and the Viper seemingly working together at the moment. Cab uh, taking out all of Slamzico with these with these galleons and uh, and and, uh, and cannon galleons. It's absolutely insane. But here we go, Bajofro now looking to make that push. And, uh, and Slam is doing everything he can to wall his units in. Bad Jofro is still putting down those Bombard Towers. The uh, the Rams, of course, going to try and take the towers down from Slam. Slam's got 28 years left on the clock. And Bad Jofro, a whole lot of Hussars. But then again, a whole lot of Mangadai from Dao. I'm sure he's going to show himself as well in the center. As 25 years about to tick down. And if Slam still controls it at the end, then he will be victorious. But is Slam going to end up like Riot? Is Slam going to be uh, dealt with once again? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Bad Jeffro now coming in with all of these Hussars. Fully upgraded, of course. But let's not forget, Dao is standing on the edge of this with a ton of Elite Mangadai. This is going to be insane. If Slam leaves this patch, if he loses any, uh, all of his units on this center area, the monument will go back to Bad Jofro. There's 15 years left in counting, and uh, Doubt now making an appearance. He's bringing his trebuchets in as well, looking to take down those Bombard Towers, and Bad Jofro needs to go. The problem is he's running into a whole lot of Halberdier here. But Doubt, dealing it seems, with those Bombards for now. He could just run in here and kill every Halberdier that remains. He has to be careful though because these Bombard Towers are going to do so much damage. He's getting in. He's going to try and snipe what he can. But I don't think he's going to be able to hold it. Even if he does. Five years left on the clock. And Slam might have this. Bajofro pushing in. But is it too late? There's four minutes. Four years left. Three years left. And I think, I think Slam might just take the game to... One and if he has any units left in the next second, he's gonna take it. I think Slam does it. GG. Slam takes the game, and what an incredible fight for the center. I'm so surprised that Riot lost that, but that was just absolutely fantastic. Slam there, um, just just holding out with the very few amount of units he had. Um, you know he had. Uh, probably 25 units in the center here. 25. And he was outnumbered by Doubt. He was outnumbered by Bad Jofra, but they left their push a little bit too late. And had they pushed in, you know, 20 seconds earlier, they might have taken that. But what an absolutely fantastic game. Uh, so surprised to see the Viper in here still at the end with these two-handed swordsmen. Jordan's base eradicated. Doubt's base eradicated. Um, this is all that Doubt had left in the end. But he still had those Mangadai to fight with. So it was good that he saw that ending fight there. But what an absolutely fantastic game that was. And uh, I'm going to come back.